action. Nothing was ever going to be the same. Danger. If I slip up or if I turn my eye for just one second, someone could get the drop on me. Adventure. The Amazon River, they have a version of everything in North America except bigger and scarier. You're listening to Sea Story. Episode 34, The White House. My name is Kyle Kozad. I'm a Rear Admiral in the United States Navy, originally from Las Vegas, Nevada, and this is my sea story. I'm a little unique as naval officers and flag officers go. I had the dream to pursue the uh, option of becoming a pilot. I've had the opportunity to become part of the world's best trained aviation force. I've been given the opportunity to deploy and operate out of locations I couldn't even identify on a map before I joined the Navy. And I've literally flown around the world in a single trip visiting key maritime support bases. And I've also been given opportunities that I never would have even considered. I was selected to serve in the White House as the 22nd director of the White House Situation Room, where I was responsible to the president, the vice president, and our national security advisor for sensitive intelligence delivery and senior leader secure communications. Like many other things, when you step into a job, you really feel out of your comfort zone. In the White House Situation Room, I was responsible for all the day-to-day -day operations, so conferencing schedules, senior leader secure comms, the, uh, the management and execution of a really small watch floor, but with a really important mission. We called ourselves Blue Badgers because a blue badge in the West Wing of the White House gave you full access and you could go under the residence to the East Wing, wherever you needed to go to do business. During that first year, I had an opportunity to, you know, not only work in the West Wing, but become familiar with President Obama. In the day-to-day -day, uh, routine of my job, it was not uncommon to uh, deal directly with the president during a National Security Council meeting, the vice president, national security advisor. And I remember the first time that I was really solo by myself, I was running an errand, and I was actually going over toward the White House military office in the East Wing of the White House. I walked through the Rose Garden area, turned into one of the inner porches there, and around the corner come President Obama and his wife, Michelle, which you know, really took the breath away from me you know, realizing that I've got full access to this place and you know, it's not uncommon to run into the President and the First Lady. We would also go to the Oval Office uh, quite frequently every time the President would uh, conduct a uh, head of state phone call with another peer of his in another country. Myself or my deputy would be in the Oval Office with the President and whatever other advisors he had there during that phone call to be able to proctor. Mm -hmm. Obviously pretty intimidating to be in an office like that, see the resolute desk, see the incredible history that is the room we call the Oval Office. A little nostalgic when you think about previous presidents who had worked out of that office and the things that they'd done. It was a fascinating perch to be on, to be a fly on the wall, watching and listening to national policy being made. The thing that strikes me the most was the level of detail into every national security decision that gets made. And quite frankly, the things that the news speculates about, maybe they don't have the whole entire story. I was there during some pretty exciting times. National security policy work that went into U.S. reaction to the Arab Spring. I was there for policy decisions and discussions that uh, President Obama had with his national security team that led to the bin Laden mission in Abbottabad. That's probably all I should say about that. In my wildest dreams, I never expected an opportunity to work in the White House. I kind of had to scratch my head and say, hey, what does a guy like me bring into a job like that? But the thing that the military really brings into a, an organization like that is the discipline, the watch standing requirements, the training aspect of making sure that on a watch floor that only has six people, but is responsible to make sure that the president, the vice president, the national security advisor, and all the senior West Wing staffers are up to date with the right level of intelligence, with the right level of information. As a guy who grew up in the cockpit, we're all about standardization, we're all about processes, we're all about procedures, and the training that leads to the ability to make decisions on your own under a significant amount of pressure. 
And if you compare flying airplanes in combat to working in a highly pressurized environment like the West Wing of the White House, they're pretty comparable. It wasn't uncommon at three o'clock in the morning for one of my young watch officers to have to make a decision to pick up a phone call that he had information that was important enough to either wake up a national security advisor or the president to be able to pass that independently without calling to ask for permission. They had the right training. And obviously, when you're going to wake up the president of the United States at three in the morning, you'd better be confident and you can guarantee yourself that uh, there are probably some sweaty palms involved in that decision. I became a historian while I was there, just fascinated with the history of the West Wing, with the history of the White House, and the history of the presidency. It's interesting that every presidency brings a unique culture, a unique personality to the place that we call the White House. President Obama and his administration were very different than the previous administration, but when you compare policy decisions, when you compare how they went about the business, everybody has one thing in mind, and it's to continue to put our country in a position where we fight for our democratic ideals and we're able to continue to support and defend the Constitution. Regardless of where you are in the world, I was able to see how important the military instrument is. It doesn't matter if you're in the west wing of the White House or if you're on the pointy end of the spear. Whether you're on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier, you're hundreds of feet under the ocean surface on a submarine, or you're a corpsman that's boots on ground somewhere, we all make history every day. To hear more stories like mine, subscribe to Sea Story today. Coming next. The river almost feels alive, like it's its own organism. If you happen to drop something in the river, the surface will look like it boils. Sea Stories brought to you by America's Navy. Learn more at Navy.com.